Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. I'm recording this on May 14th, 2012, and we're going to pick up right where we left off in the last episode. Before we begin though, I want to remind you all about my Let's Code Test Driven JavaScript screencast series that I'm launching on Kickstarter. I'm very excited about this, and I think that it has a lot of promise for anybody who's interested in doing professional development in JavaScript. Of course, we're covering test driven development and incremental design and all the good stuff you're seeing here, but in JavaScript. So if you're interested in JavaScript, if you're interested in test driven development, please check it out and uh, thank you for your support. So when we left off we were just trying to be kind of tricky. I think uh, I, I think this might work. I, I don't know. We'll see. It's got some promise. Um, what we're doing is using a state-based approach to our testing rather than a mock-based mock -based approach. And the problem with the state-based approach is that you end up having to expose well, the internal state of your methods, and with the mock-based approach, you don't have to chat, you don't have to do that. You can just uh, look at the behavior. Uh, they both have their downsides. Uh, the design problems with the state-based approach is that you expose more details about what's going on inside your class through the public interface um, or the package interface. The problem with the mock-based approach is that you have to know more about the implementation details uh, of of the object you're calling. Uh, you have to know what objects it references, which I personally consider to be an implementation detail. So neither approach is perfect, but I do tend to prefer the state-based approach because I think the mock-based approach gets a little too messy overall. I'd rather have my public interface be a little bit bigger and a little bit more comprehensive than uh, have to deal with the the stuff you get with mocks. Uh, you end up having to use mocking frameworks or build rolling your own, and then slowly the, the stuff you've rolled your own s doesn't work for every case, and it gets increasingly ugly. Um, anyway, so we're going to try this. I don't know if it's going to work out, but uh, we were just saying we were just adding this has saved method to save file so we could do a state based test on it. So if we've done this, we could say save file dot save. And then we should be able to assert true should be saved after save called for obvious reasons. And I'll just put, we don't care what these values are, so. I'll just put in generics. Okay. trick here, of course, is that we don't want has save to be true if there was an exception. So that's what we'll need to test next. Now for this, we'll definitely need to um, definitely need to, well, I was going to say we're going to definitely have to use a mock, but we may not actually. I think we can just set our path to be read only. Hmm. How can we do this? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a file, I'm going to mark it read-only, and then I'm going to try to save, and that should force an exception. So I guess we're going to have to expect an exception as well.
All right, so that's what we're going to do there. Um, I'm not sure how to make a file read-only in Java, so let's go ahead and pull that in. Here we go. Oh, it's that easy. I think it's that easy. And afterwards, um, let's see. We're going to want to set this writable afterwards, otherwise, we might end up with stuff hanging around. Okay. Well, I hope that works. Yeah, that looks like it worked perfectly. Um, at least it didn't throw an exception. So if we turn, take this out, then yeah, except this needs to be in a finally block. Otherwise, who knows what's happening? I mean, it's possible it's being deleted anyway, but I really don't want to leave cruft out there. Okay, this looks promising. Okay, so what that's telling us is that this needs to be down here. So good. Yes, there we go. Now, this is definitely a little bit more work than the mock object approach, but um, part of the reason I'm doing this is because I can actually, uh, these these methods I'm creating make sense in the, concept, in the context of the responsibilities of the object. Uh, I wouldn't want to create them if they didn't make sense. So that's how I'm justifying it, at least <laughs> how I'm justifying it to myself. I don't know if any of you agree that it's justifiable, and um, you might be right. So has saved is not about has whether or not it's changed, it's whether or not it has saved, has ever been saved. There. Okay. So now that we've got that, now We can have this work entirely differently. Now, another disadvantage of this approach that you might be seeing with the behavior driven development, uh, I mean, the behavior based testing, the mock based testing. Uh, you can go from the top down. Uh, with the state-based testing, you sort of have to build it from the bottom up, and that can be a little bit of a brain bender. Um, 
So that is another disadvantage of the state-based approach that I'm using here. You saw how I had to go into save file, implement that, and then come back out to application model. Uh, if I was using mocks, I could start with application model and not worry about save file. So, and in this case, I'm okay with it. Um, I do tend to, as I said, I do tend to prefer the save or the state-based approach, but I still obviously use mocks a fair amount. You see it all the time in my own code here. Um, so, you know, it's again, as, as with anything, it's a matter of choosing the right tool for the job and being aware of the trade-offs, I think. And um, being also aware that no tool is perfect. They all have disadvantages. They all have something that's not, that, that causes di design pain and that the need in software development is to balance all those trade-offs so that your design is as good as you know how to make it. Anyway, off the soapbox, let's go ahead and write this save method. So I think what I can do here is just say, Um, that save saves the file. Now the problem here is that implementing this right means putting in that cheat from last time, which is to say, or from a couple of episodes ago now, which is to say, not actually writing to the disk when we're in test mode. Okay, this is a terrible name, but now I'm not going to write an explicit test around this because it is so simple. I mean, it is this code is being covered. Um, but I'm not testing it with its own thing. I'm also not going to test how it behaves when an exception occur occurs because we don't have any logic around that. Um, that testing stays in save file. Oh, it wants user entered dollars. Okay, so that's still not quite correct because it's not using the right. Oh, what's wrong now? Oh. A little bit of aliasing there. Okay. So there. This will probably blow up because the file path I'm passing in is bad. Oh, it didn't. Well, that means we've just dropped a bogus file on the system. <laughs> uh, which we'll have to fix next time. So thanks very much for watching, everybody. I will catch you next time.